On August 14th, we sat down with the legendary director and former actor, Patrick Long Kong. On September 2nd, we learned that Patrick had passed away. Patrick made his first film about 50 years ago and had a huge influence on succeeding filmmakers, including John Woo and Choi Hawk, whom I interviewed just before. Long Kong's career had a deep impact on me as well. As soon as I started doing research, I realized he was way ahead of his time. My first impression was a positive one. He was far from being a subtle storyteller. Despite being ill, Long Kong gave me the honor to interview him right after he was granted a Lifetime Achievement Award. Long Kong's attitude towards criticism was perhaps one of the most important things I learned after talking to him. But his ability to tackle and explore delicate social issues that no other filmmaker would touch during his time is and will forever be inspiring to me. And I believe to anyone who is in the industry or who is able to appreciate a fearless film. You're an immensely influential pioneer of Cantonese language films. You have directed and written 14 films, as you've said. You were also a prominent actor, having a career that lasted about half a century. Mm -hmm. Patrick, if you could describe yourself using one word, what would it be? Well, I would say I am a Cantonese picture reformer. Yes, I really do something. I really work very hard for the Cantonese picture, just to want to put the standard higher, make better film, make better quality films, but not just get into the market and grab the money and run. Yeah, always make the picture, have some kind of message to deliver, and uh, so the, the, the audience likes it. So I still can survive, yes. Patrick, you immigrated to the U.S. in the early 80s. 82. What made you decide to make that move? It's a romantic move. Yeah? <laughs> because I came over to get married. That's the most important part of it, yes. <laughs> Were you happy staying here and not returning? I love New York. Yeah? Beautiful, <laughs> yes. You have said before that the Hong Kong's film industry needs the Chinese market, otherwise there's not enough financial support. How do you think that changes the actual content, the movies that come out of Hong Kong and its movie industry? Now, your question is quite complicated. Let me separate it into uh, maybe a few. Huh? Mm -hmm. Firstly, talking about investing money in Hong Kong movie. Mm -hmm. Actually, making movie needs a lot of money, a lot. No matter how small a budget, even nowadays you start a new, uh, say, low budget film, easily costs you millions of dollars. Absolutely. All right. Why I say uh, we need the Chinese market? Because in Hong Kong, you make films, you only can sell certain, certain nearby Southeast Asian countries and that you won't get back that much money. So if you can sup get support or get capital from some, invest some investors, then of course you have bigger money. You have bigger money, you can make bigger films, you can make bigger money, that's all. That's the main point. If you don't have the money, you can. You can make the very low, low budget local films. And then, uh, of course, you cannot get into a bigger market. <laughs> That's why. You always wanted to put an emphasis on social issues with your movies. What were some of the most important issues that you think you touched with your works? If you want to understand more clearly, you have to study more about Hong Kong's film mm -hmm. or his past history. Yeah. Um, what I really want is that every picture I make 
must have a clear subject, must have something, some kind of message to tell the people. Because I make films not only by entertaining them, but also that I hope I can influence them to pay attention to the social issue. Mm -hmm. When there's a social problem, stay there, which is no good. So, sooner or later, you will have trouble with that. Mm. And what do you have to say to those people that in the past called you too preachy or that had negative criticism towards mm. your work? Mm. I don't mind. Yeah. Yes, because uh, the more they say I'm too preachy, I will say more. Because uh, if they can say bad things, why not I can tell something good? For example, Bible. Every good word in it, why, why, why not? Why, why you criticize them is bad. It's nothing bad. You should, you should learn from them. Because those are the good things which you can make a better world and live in a better place. A lot of your movies were very controversial. And that made you have a difficult relationship with the censorship and with the critics. How did that influence you creatively? I don't care them. I don't care about them too much, because if you care every word they say, you can never make a movie anymore, or make a full movie I like. Yeah. So usually I make films I like first. I'm not making for the critics. I make it for, and then why? Why should I like that film? Because I have something important or or message or whatever to tell them. That's why I make the film. So I, I don't quite care about the critics. Uh, controversial, yes. Say, for example, I make Hiroshima 28. I tell people how terrible it will be if there's a nuclear war happens in our world. They say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind about them. I tell my own message. You listen, you listen. You don't listen, never mind. And speaking of which, now it's the retrospective of your career. What is your favorite piece, favorite thing that you have done? All right. Actually, I only direct 14 films. Mm -hmm. Any picture I don't like, I will not make it. In other words, the 14 films I direct, or written, or produced by myself, I like them all. <laughs> I don't put them in color. Which no one favorite? No favorite. <laughs> That's the thing I want to tell. That's the thing I want to make. And that, but usually, my films make money too. Yeah. Yes, they make a lot of records. I use, I use the same Cantonese picture I won the Best Director Award in the Asian Film Festival. I use the same kind of Cantonese picture I won the Best Picture uh, in uh, in Singapore, uh, now even now nowadays they are still looking my old picture, and they like it. They give me a lifetime achievement award. That's Hong Kong's picture, so so I like them all. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much. I thank you. John Wu is finishing a new production and couldn't be here in New York for the retrospective of Long Kong's work. Although it's very sad that they couldn't talk in person one last time, hopefully this can be somewhat of a response to John's thoughtful words. Thank you to our mentor, director, uh, Long Kong. Uh, he always an idol for uh, director as me as and also uh, John Wu and so many other directors. Uh, remember in 1983, I think, uh, this was uh, like more than 10 years after the story of discharge prisoner been released in Hong Kong. When we were, I was with John Wu in Taiwan and we the, every day we talk about is the 
story of the discharged prisoner because we were so much affected by the movie that we thought that it's about time we should ask for Director Lung Tong's permission to remake the movie. And eventually, we got the permission. And then we did actually remake the movie and became a big hit in Hong Kong. And not only Hong Kong, it's big hit become, you know, the hit, big hit happened to a lot of places, which also changed the career of John Woo. Uh, John Woo paid higher salute and homage to Director Lung Kong because this movie has inspired us to open up a new vision and a direction for Hong Kong movie to the world. And um, when uh, I was asked to come to New York City to attend this event, um, and director John Wu also wanted to come, only that he's so busy, occupied by his recent movie, so he didn't make it. But he recorded a short video to talk about his uh, reaction to, or his response to this uh, wonderful event uh, to pay homage to uh, our director Long Kong. Um, the film made by director Long Kong has become a very important documentary uh, documents of Hong Kong history, uh, which will record a lot of things that we may forget in the future. But then it was in the movie uh, directed by this wonderful mentor, Long Kong Patrick, that had given us a very strong uh, memory or record of what happened to Hong Kong in the 60s and the 70s. And very strangely, the thing that he mentioned in the movie in the 1670s did happen again in the 80s and the 90s. So he is more or less a, almost like a, a person who predicts what happened to the fate of Hong Kong uh, in his movie. So I think to look at Lung Kong's movie, you have to really uh, understand what's the background in Hong Kong. You would feel more deeply, and you would be respond. You would respond more strongly to what his movie is about. So I would uh, make a shot here so that you know we can see the rest of the uh, activity. If uh, we can show the video of uh, John Wu to say hello to uh, um, Patrick uh, Long Kong, and then uh, and then we will hear what Long Kong talk about. Himself. Thank you. Long Kong, Xin Sang. Hello. Ah, I thank you for Xin Sang because you are my teacher. You are my very good teacher. Very happy. Ah, today I am still in Beijing watching the film, so I have no time to talk to you. But you have to know that I am always very concerned and happy. 係啊啊，咩、啊、都好啊，掛住。我非常感激，即係喺我啊年青嘅時候，喺我最學電影、最需要電影嘅時候，能夠睇到你哋戲，唔單止話睇到《火影王子》啊，《英雄主色》啊，啊啊《啊飛女正傳》所有所有所有嘅戲，你嘅電影俾我非常之大嘅啟發。你唔單止係創造咗一個新嘅香港電影形式同埋電影語言，同時你都係將你嘅愛心、將你嘅人民精神，同埋你對呢個社會、對所有人嘅關懷，都放喺一部電影裏面。呢呢啲係俾我最大嘅啟發，能夠使我使到我體悟到拍一部電影係應該將人性最善良、最正義。最好嘅一面表現出嚟，同埋真正係關心全世界每一個人。所以我會啊，繼續你所做嘅嘢，你所行嘅路，同埋我非常感激、非常幸運，我哋隨刻誒，而家有咁好嘅機會，能夠繼續
去拍你嘅英雄本色，即係話我哋能夠係承繼咗、承接咗你嘅作風，同埋你做人做事嘅風格、你嘅風骨，你多多保重，同埋希望你早日康復，同埋你要放心，因為我哋會係繼續行你嘅路，同埋你永遠都係我心中嘅偶像。永遠都係我最崇拜嘅世界導演之一啊！好，祝福你啊！希望啊能夠早啲聽到你嘅聲音。OK， 非常掛念你，全部。刚刚听过各位所讲用光嘅好话，听到我心都跳咗出嚟，因为我实在唔知道自己做过呢啲咁好嘅事。喺诶六十年代咧，我俾人哋无端端升咗做粤语片导演。喺嗰個時候咧，就係粵語片最壞嘅時候，或者換句話講咧，嗰、那個時期啊，粵語片根本就係面臨淘汰出局。點解會俾人淘汰出局呢？主要就係好多嘅產量失咗 quality 嘅控制。喺 free market 裏面，只有壞得好壞嘅電影先至唔可以 survive 嘅。唔係講粵語話嘅片，誒、呃、會會會會會被淘汰出局。咁當時咧，包括我自己嘅製片公司，包括所有嘅同業人咧，就好似俾我一個 challenge， 一個挑戰。咁你拍俾我哋睇下啦，你咁叻。由嗰陣時起咧，我用盡全自己全身嘅能量拍咗十四位，但係呢十四個戲裏邊咧，都係完全唔同嘅一種主題。而且咧，亦都唔準我自己重複我自己拍過嘅主題，所以講話我應該講到呢度就夠啦。因為各位仲有好多嘢要聽講，聽我唔講嗰啲話。咁咧，好多謝你哋今日嚟，多謝你哋上面 ，thank you。With great humbleness and high respect, I present this. Wonderful award, lifetime achievement to our wonderful teacher, Dr. Tsai. We all can see now that the Cantonese film today are no longer terrible Cantonese films. <laughs> For example, the very funny comedies by Stephen Chow. <laughs> if those films are not in Cantonese, I believe uh, that the uh, box office will be uh, less than half of that. <laughs> and also, uh, Chui Hark, who is with us today, uh, uh, director Chui Hak is one of the directors that I pay a lot of attention to. Because I was a filmmaker, I knew what it takes to be a filmmaker. And Chui Hark has all those uh, qualities. 
So for an AP So for an 80 year old man like me, seeing young men with such achievement, I'm, I'm very happy. So my last word will be uh, Cantonese films are film made in Cantonese and they are not terrible films made in Cantonese. Last month, the Museum of Moving Image in Queens presented a two-weekend retrospective of Patrick Long Kong's work. He appeared on stage in a Buddhist monk's garb. He stated that he was 100% retired and interacted with a crowd that seemed so eager to come close to him to celebrate his life, his achievements, and all the powerfulness he'll forever represent. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>